what seems to be a no-brainer for us code-savvy developers is often totally ignored by beginners. Exception handling can provide you with lots of useful information to find out what is actually going wrong in your code. And talking about scripting inventors, it even prevents you from losing data. Here's why. Let's assume we want to load a text file into our script. You might say, I know the file is there. What can possibly go wrong? Well, let's make a small typo. If you click on compile, there will be no error. So everything seems to be right. Save and close the script. Now, if you look in the message window, you see script validation failed. It even tells you that a file could not be found. And well, you say like, no, that, that was easy. So yet again, why should I care about exception handling again? Ventus seems to be doing it for me. Well, that's only half the truth. Let's look at the next example. We will now do the exact same stream reader thingy, but this time we will put it on a separate thread. Why will we do that? Well, sometimes you're working with classes that do not provide asynchronous methods. In other words, when you run such a method, you will stall the renderer till the method has finished its job. Well, the downside? Well, Ventus will not take care of exceptions that occur in your threads. The stream reader actually provides asynchronous methods, but for simplicity, we will stick with it. Here's the method that contains our open file process, including the intentional typo. And this is how a separate thread is launched. It's uh, inside this method, initiate madness, so I can start it from outside the script, save and exit. Here we are now. Are you ready? Let's go. Fatal error, unhandled exception. It even tells you what was wrong, found not found. Okay, let's click on cancel. Oops, Ventus just crashed completely. Well, if you didn't save the moment before you started Initiate Madness, you've lost your data. Here's how to do it the correct way. We will use a try and catch block to handle exceptions. I know there are hundreds of ways how to do that. That's the most common. Everything inside the try block is executed normally until an exception occurs. In that case, the catch block takes over. For the lazy ones, doing just this is enough. But now that we came that far, we can also put in some more effort. If you haven't seen this before, this is how you write to the message window inside Ventus. You can write to info, warnings, error, and so on. This sets the module part. I use it to categorize errors. And this sets the description part. The catch block will be handed over an object that represents the type of exception that occurred. In this case, it's the general exception object can be printed to the message window like I've done it up here. And if you look in the message window, you can even see which sort of exception it is. Found not found exception in this case. This might also be enough. I mean, we've got an output, Ventus doesn't crash, but there are some additional things you have to consider. Most importantly, what if the exception, for whatever reason, happens here? Uh, this reads the text from the file into a string. Uh, you will still have a stream reader object hanging around in your memory. Well, how exactly do we handle this case? There actually is a third block that completes a try and catch statement. Finally, everything inside finally is executed even if there was an exception in the try block. Well, here's a little trick. Let's set the object to be empty outside the try catch statement. We can now check if the object is not empty any longer and close it if needed. And that's it. Of course, there is a lot more about exception handling, but this short introduction will do in most cases.